his thoughts on the Saglami uh, projects, the intention of the ministry uh, to, uh, if you like, allow a private developer to take over and also, you know, deal with it, especially with the current circumstances that uh, the country is faced with. So over to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, quite an interesting uh, situation that we're finding ourselves in. Like I said from the beginning, mm. um, if you look at the trajectory of these particular projects, and I said that this project is not in isolation. It's one of a lot of situations that we find ourselves in, in government or in, in this country. So I'm not looking at it from any point uh, that probably may look actually political. I believe that as a country, because it's actually something that started many, many, not, not today, even from Nkrumah time, there were situations like this. And it has continued to really come out and shout, and then eventually, finally, everything goes down. Other countries are taking very, making very good use of their resources. And I think there must be that deliberateness to find solutions to some of these things. Now, um, like I said, if you take the Saglemi as a case, and I'm building a case not in anybody's favor, I'm just showing how things happen in this country. A project that was estimated to be 196 million. When? That was, I think, in 2012 when it was projected. I mean, the idea was mooted. It was estimated to be about 196 million. Then, many houses. Four years later, a review was done by the same administration. And it was discovered that what they actually targeted to be 196 million could not be possible. And that the best they could do was even under 1,500. But yet, four years down the line, after, uh, since the, the idea was actually initiated, the 196 million had been expended. And so that is the, the current situation that we find at the, at the, at the, the sites now, the pictures you were showing. So where is the 3,500 extra? And then look the, at what the happened. Units, housing units. Yes, exactly. So then look at what happened. So when another administration came, looking at the situation, they felt, no, this does not really make uh, fair. I mean, it doesn't make sense. So they engaged, I think, eight years so, and other engineers to do project audits across board. To also come up with their findings. And after that, which also took some time. So here, time has been wasted. But something quite suspicious, and it was obvious. So they needed to do it. They had to do it. The project that was supposed to be 96 million, 196 million, was estimated eventually to be 64 million. Immediately you will say, oh, then some people have chopped. It may not technically be the same. It may not even be the, there may be issues of deterioration. There may be, there may be issues of, uh, I mean, a whole lot of challenges to the cost of, uh, the cost that was imputed into the project estimates. I cannot tell. The case currently is in court. So I wouldn't even want to say anything that would prejudice, uh, prejudice the case in court. But this is what happened. 196 million reduced to 64 million four years later. So the question is, now, even after it is reduced, this administration came into power close to almost our six years now. And in six years, so now that we are actually looking at the possibility of engaging private sector to find the extra 46 million you complete the project and then sell it. Now, so I would say, you see, this is a project that has been heavily frustrated. Heavily frustrated, one, 
first, by the people who mooted the idea, they estimated it at a certain high value. At the end of the day, whatever happened within that four-year space, economically, that reduced the cost or the, the whole project value to 64 million, they will have to answer. Now, the new administration that also took over, also looking at the project legally, we're afraid to continue with something they probably suspect to be heavily frustrated or heavily, I mean, loaded with corrupt activities. So they need the time to audit, come up with findings, and then find a way forward. The need for time to audit, you cannot question it in the situation where you are dealing with public funds. So that is the case. So here is my thinking. Because it's always public funds, there are procedures, there are processes that one has to go through. And in this country, it looks like we are building experts into following the procedure who are very good at the procedures. We are building lawyers whose thinking is always to go and protect just the procedure and not about the substance. We are more interested in the form, in almost everything that we do. And we are not so much looking at the substance. You go take a decision to look at the, form, uh, the, the substance of an issue, to deal with the issue. Immediately, a lawyer will refer you to a particular area you have sidestepped. Or when the auditor comes, the auditor will go through and, de and, de and declare it irregular. OK, so we have to go. So the point is that you say, yes, it's OK to leave it for a private developer because it's been heavily frustrated. It's been heavily frustrated. Okay. Not OK to leave it to a private for a, a de developer. But I think engaging a private developer and find a way to recoup the investment, at least reasonably, mm. to a certain level. Okay. If that investment can be recouped by, because this thing, if the government should just go and find a uh, 46 million, can be put it in it. Ghanaians will want to even be directly interested and be asking for affordability of it. This project has actually lost its affordability status. Mm. So you cannot push this project, or government must not push this project. Give it to the private person, let it be sold at a higher market rate, so that at least the government can re recover that money. Just, and then when that money comes... About food, you, 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 I think you went against this policy of allowing private people to increase food that burdens the government. No, 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 no. I didn't, I, I didn't go against. I said that without the, because of the exigencies of so the time. So you wanted government. Of, of course. So you no, don't because, think that. no, but in this particular case, this, uh, this, uh, this is more of a project... I mean, housing project is not an immediate, it's not a social commodity. It's not anything that the is... investment is going down. Our money is... Uh -huh. So they, to recover the investment, we must go the market value. And then recover whatever we gain from it, mm. then probably we can pro properly plan mm. and then reinvest such money mm. into more affordable options for this country. Otherwise, we will actually create a problem for ourselves. We're grateful. So it's purely a business decision, mm. in my opinion. Right, right. Thank you very much indeed for your time, as always. Um, Philip Nia J is, of course, a member of the New Patriotic Party's National Communications team, and we'll be spending time up next.